Hello everyone, this is Iris Trivia, and welcome back to the first Emperor of Wu Let's Talk Lore series as we continue with episode 2 titled Stealing the Zhou Province. Now we ended our last episode with Shi Xie's death in 226, and for Sun Quan, this provided a long-awaited opportunity to bring the Zhou province directly under his own control, as even though Shi Xie was the perfect vassal, Sun Quan was insecure about allowing such an influential clan remain in power after 40 years of undisputed control. For the Shi clan, Sun Quan's decision to make a move on them after 16 years of loyal service, right when their family patriarch had just passed away, definitely felt like betrayal. For no matter how you slice it, the Shi clan had done nothing wrong. Ever since Shi Xie decided to switch sides from Cao Cao to Sun Quan in 210, following the results of the Battle of Chibi, the Zhou province had done all the right things. Every year, an endless amount of exotic southern treasures would flow into Wu, as Shi Xie was extremely generous with his tributes, as convoys were frequently sent to Wu with spices, silk, pearls, crystals, jades, tropical fruits, rhino horns, and elephant tusk. And more importantly, with a lack of native horse stock inside Wu, the Zhou province through their trade routes ended up being a major horse trading hub for Wu, as Shi Xie would frequently give Sun Quan hundreds of much needed war horses at a time. Politically speaking, Shi Xie was also unwavering in his support of Sun Quan, as he would help put down Cang Wu's administrator Wu Ju when Wu Ju refused to submit to Sun Quan, and also played a large role in persuading former Liu Zhang officials in the southern parts of the Yi province to turn coat over from the kingdom of Shu Han. As a matter of fact, Shi Xie even played a role in spurring the Nanman rebellion within Shu Han, following Liu Bei's death. And as a safeguard to make Sun Quan trust the Shi clan, Shi Xie allowed Sun Quan to install Bu Zhi as the prefect of the Zhao province to supervise their every move, and even sent his oldest son Shi Xin as a political hostage to Wu, where he would serve as the administrator of Wu Chang. Yet despite all this, the moment Shi Xie passed away, Sun Quan made his move, as when the whole world was expecting Shi Xie's son, Shi Hui, to inherit the governor position from Shi Xie, Sun Quan would decree that Shi Hui will instead be sent south as administrator to the commandery of Jiu Zhen, while he would be sending Chen Shi from Wu to serve as the new governor of the Zhao province. Then to further weaken the Shi clan's influence, Sun Quan took Lu Dai's advice and decided to split up the Zhao province into two new provinces, as Hepu and three northern commanderies will now be called Guangzhou, with Lu Dai serving as its prefect, while Jiao Zhi and the two southern commanderies will remain as Jiao Zhou, with Dai Liang serving as the new prefect there. So in one sweeping move, Sun Quan took away four commanderies from the original Jiao province, and aside from one administrator position in the fringe commandery of Jiu Zhen, the Shi clan went from the undisputed rulers of the seven commanderies of the south to a marginalized clan, as outsiders from the Wu court are now on their way to rule over them. Angered by these decisions, Shi Hui, with the support of the local populace who had long grown accustomed to the Shi clan's rule, openly rejected Sun Quan's decrees as Shi Hui garrisoned his forces at Haikou to prevent the two new prefects in Dai Liang and Chen Shi from entering the Jiao province. Now at this time, there were many officials on Shi Hui's side that were concerned that their small and inexperienced army could not withstand the full might of Wu. So official Huan Lin pleaded with Shi Hui to accept the decrees. Feeling betrayed now by even his own officials, Shi Hui executed Huan Lin. But with the Huan clan being an influential southern clan within the Zhao province, Huan Lin's older brother Huan Zhi immediately raised the force to attack Shi Hui 
in order to avenge his brother's death. And as these two sides fought on for months to a standstill, all while the Wu forces looked on across the border, they finally decided to end the matter peacefully as a few inter-clan marriages were proposed and the Huan clan agreed to stand down. But during this time, Lü Dai, who played a huge role in forming this hardline policy against the Shi clan, had been in communication with Sun Quan, requesting a large army to put down the Shi clan by force. And when this army finally assembled, Lü Dai combined his forces with Dai Liang and Chen Shi's armies as they now marched directly against Shi Hui. Now, just having fought an internal uprising, and now facing off against a real army from Wu, Shi Hui was beginning to have second thoughts. And seizing upon this fear, Lü Dai had one of his retainers in Shi Kuang, who was a distant cousin to Shi Hui, write a letter to Shi Hui promising him that if he stands down and surrender, then while he can no longer be allowed to remain even as administrator, he and the rest of the Shi clan can remain in the Zhao province and live out their days using the wealth they had accumulated. Enticed by this offer, and trusting the words of someone from his own clan, Shi Hui and six of his siblings and cousins decided to surrender as they took off their own shirts and tied themselves up to show that they are acknowledging their crimes as they opened the gates and allowed Lu Dai and his army into the city. Once inside, Lu Dai graciously untied the Shi clan and announced that their crimes would be forgiven, as a grand feast was planned with all the Shi clan member. Yet during this feast, just as all of the Shi clan arrived, Lu Dai showed his true colors and Sun Quan's true intentions, as guards soon rushed in to arrest all the male members of the Shi clan, while Lu Dai read off their crimes. Then immediately, Lu Dai executed all the main members of the Shi clan as the army moved quickly to put down any remaining resistances within the city. Of course, with such a cold-blooded move, backlash in the form of rebellions was bound to happen. But with the Shi clan wiped out and the Zhao province without any real standing army, Lu Dai was able to quickly move through the entire province as any and all resistance movements such as the one led by the Huan clan were silenced. And in a final slap to the face, Sun Quan would soon announce that the Zhao province and the newly created Guangzhou province would be merged once again back together to the Zhao province, which clearly showed that the first division was nothing more than a power grab move to weaken the Shi clan, and now with the Shi clan wipe, there was no need to create a new province, as Lü Dai, the orchestrator of the whole ordeal, now takes on the role of the prefect for the new recombined Zhao province, as now this province is truly directly under Sun Quan's control. And with that, we're going to be ending our episode here, as we'll come back next time to start covering the Battle of Shi Ting in 228 between Sun Quan and Cao Xiu's forces that would finally give Sun Quan the grand victory needed over Wei to give himself the mandate of heaven in order to crown himself the emperor. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!